welcome to Mind Your Own Business TV. I'm Debbie Davis. We have an interesting guest with us today. His name is Tyler Wood. He's the author of The End. That's it, The End. That's all we had to say. Welcome, Tyler. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Good, good. Now, this is the first? Yes. The first book you've written? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. First book I've published. You've published. Yes. Okay, so tell me first of all where you're from. Uh, well, I'm from Westbrook, so I'm relatively local, I'd say. But didn't you live in Biddeford? I, I did live in while? Biddeford. I lived in Biddeford for a couple of years right on Main Street. It was, uh, it was an interesting, interesting place to live. Yeah. I, had, I had a lot of fun there. So. It is fun here. Yeah. Now, when did you start writing? Um, I was, I've always, as long as I can remember. So I'd say... Um, Jeez. Since you could write? Yeah, pretty much. Really? Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's always been my thing. Um, so it's, you know, things got longer and more complex the better I got at it and the older I got. And mm -hmm. um, you just kind of involuntarily practice throughout the years. So. What do you like to write about? <laughs> um, I, I go into all kinds of different genres, really. Um, before this, uh, 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 this is... Uh, was this sci-fi, post-apocalyptic? Yeah, I, I when I I want to say I was probably in seventh or eighth grade and wrote something similar to this. Really? But it wasn't. Yeah, but it it uh, it never panned out. It wasn't really something that I, I kept up with, and uh, and after that I I, I, I bounce around. It's mm -hmm. fun. It's fun to write all kinds of different genres. Do you just write stories, just fiction? Uh, no, not necessarily. No, um, no I've uh, I have a couple of nonfiction books that I've I've put together um, really? but yeah but you know 50 75 pages and a, a lot of times I lose interest in them. So. yeah yeah this one's more interesting I bet uh, yes yes that one's this, <laughs> this has been a lot of fun to write so. well let's talk about this book where is it set and and who's the main character uh, well uh, that's it's set in New England so uh, it starts off somewhere in the area of Connecticut but okay. um, what was wrong with Maine? Well, it's it's so far north, it's cold up here. <laughs> really? <laughs> it is this winter. I mean, it's a it's a post-apocalyptic setting. So uh, one of the things that I kind of had to come to terms with was a lot of these people that survive aren't going to be able to survive a lot of the weather restrictions that we have up here. And well, that's so probably true. The, the furthest north that people would be able to survive easily would be Connecticut. It's probably going to be as far north as, as we'd get when resources are nil. Okay, good to know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, tell us who the character is, the main character. Well, the, the main character is Grayson, uh, as far as he knows. Uh, he's not sure. He's not sure. He's just been told that that is his name. Ah, yes, he did. See, so. I've read some of it, guys. <laughs> well, let me just read a little bit from the back. It's a man with no memory regains consciousness 22 years following a worldwide nuclear holocaust. Follow this fast-paced journey of exploration, adventure, and discovery of the truths regarding the mysteries of both himself and this brave new world. It is very exciting. I have just got it yesterday. In fact, we just met yesterday. Yes. And uh, I'm 63 pages in because that's all the time I had before I had to go to bed. <laughs> but I cannot wait to continue reading it. Now, th where did the topic come from? Uh, well, I I've there's a lot of fatalistic idea right now. It's not so far out of the realm of possibility. Mm -hmm. It's one of my my big things is uh, closing loopholes. Uh, I have a lot of difficulty with uh, reading a lot of current books um, and looking at a lot of current storylines and saying, well, why didn't they just do that? Mm -hmm. It's the horror movie where the, the, the girl walks into the dark room and doesn't turn the light on. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> It's completely ridiculous. Why would you not turn the light on? Right. So I really go out of my way in the book to close all these loopholes. Um, to to look ahead in the future, I'm not saying that I, I, I would hope, and I'm not looking forward to some kind of nuclear holocaust. That's not something that 
you know, I would ever want to happen or anything like that. Right. But it's not out of the realm of possibility. Mm -hmm. It's something that could happen. Um, just it's it's just another end world scenario, mm -hmm. and it gives uh, I don't know, I, it it opens the imagination to say that the world could be completely different with something that is totally possible. Well, as a reader, I appreciate you taking care of those loopholes yeah. because when we read something, or even watching a movie where you see some woman going into a dark room on a scary movie and not turning on the light, it's like, come on. Yeah. It's almost insulting to the viewer or the reader. Yes. This I'm, I'm finding is, is much more sophisticated. Um, tell me about how you came up with the format. Um, well, okay, so <laughs> I was having, I, I wrote the entire book and I'm writing the entire series in third person. Mm -hmm. So if the main character doesn't know about it, you won't. Right. So what I had to do was I had to have some kind of insight outside of that. A simple chapter break where time passes isn't going to let that happen. And if I allow time to pass without the third person perspective, then you don't learn anything while he learns something. So I can't have him out of shots because it reads so fluently with him. Unless basically, unless he's sleeping, you get to know We're about with him. We're with him. Yeah. Um, and that makes it, that, that gives it a different kind of feel. Um, this so, is why he's the writer and I'm not, because I never <laughs> would have thought of that. It's like, oh, wow. So uh, instead, I, I offer all of this insight uh, through um, news articles from the past that uh, I actually have sheets at home. I had to Where I do you notes. get these? They're insert. They are, they're actual <laughs> like AP news reports or things like that, yep. and they're always pertinent to whatever we have just read or are going to read. Right. Um, it's, it, it, most of, most of the people that have read this book don't believe that I don't plan any of them in advance. I don't. Um, I don't write those articles before I write the story that goes along with them. I don't think all the way through a storyline. I connect them all after. Everything comes together after. So just in the first, uh, 60 pages or 70 mm -hmm. or 80 pages just past where you are, there's, a uh, there's actually a series of communications that you get to read between oh, I two read people. It yet. Okay. And they all line up, but you have no idea why you're even reading them. And they, they, it's not that they don't make sense, they do. But you don't quite understand why, and then all of a sudden, everything just lines up at the end. And I honestly did not think it through before it happened. It's just, it, it's just kind of how it lines up. The story writes itself for me. But that's just kind of like you said, it's, that's why I'm writing it. <laughs> and you hear that from people who do great works, like the song just wrote itself or the story just wrote itself. Um, that's why I'm so intrigued to read it because I know it's going to be good. And just from what I've read so far, I can't wait to get back to yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just as much fun to write, I hope, as it is to read. Mm -hmm. um, I have to uh, check myself quite often. I self-edit constantly as I go through and yeah. make things line up. But yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely a finished product. What is it like for you to actually write? I mean, did, did the story come first or did you sit down to start to write and then it just took off? Well, I, uh, I started the book in August 2013. Uh, which is... Not long ago. That's a long time ago, well, considering, did, considering what I've done since. I published in uh, on November fourth, two thousand fourteen. So a little more than a year later. Right. That's not bad. Well, you say that, but I took nine months off in between. Wow. So I. Uh, so you're a fast I, writer. I, I wrote the first seventy-five pages in um, probably three weeks in August uh, of two thousand thirteen, and then I just stopped writing. Um, I lost interest in it. It, really? Yeah, it uh, it didn't work for me, so I stopped. And that's what happens with a lot of the things I write. I just I lose it. Um, but contrary to previous books, I'd actually I'd, I'd written this unbelievably long story before this that um, was really creative, but it was really out there. And I learn something from myself every time I write. Mm -hmm. 
So that book, I introduced too many characters and forgot who they all were. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that so would I, be a problem. Yes, so I, I couldn't keep writing it and I gave up on it. So when I started writing again that August, I started taking notes for myself as I was writing. So as I'd introduce characters, I'd write down the names and I'd write a little bit about them. Oh. And I'd go through on that um, for the dates that uh, all the news articles and the communications are written. I have a separate page for those that are all lined up for all the numbers and everything else so that I can make sure that I'm not overlapping and, and little things on that. Um, I actually date stamp every single one of those news articles in case you haven't noticed at the I bottom. I did. There's a little date stamp yep. and that's so that I can find it in the document easily when, oh, uh, when I need see. to go back and overlook the facts so that I can make everything line up. Oh. But, well, now, when is this taking place? That uh, the book takes place in 2056, okay. and uh, it starts in late spring. And in 2034, yeah. supposedly, uh, the proverbial stuff hit the fan. Right, yeah. And, <laughs> and all kinds of stuff happens. Yes. <clears throat> but before that, the human race actually makes... Yes! Oh. You've got some wonderful references about some companies that, yes. that we know now. Um, then in the future and how their rivalry still continues, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. I thought that was very clever. Yeah, um, I, I get to, uh, the amount of companies now that, you know, that have been around for 50 years, mm -hmm. It's there aren't a whole lot of them. It's, it's a handful. So by 2034, you got to assume that some of these companies don't exist anymore, only the biggest ones mm -hmm. that are really going to be able to stick around. Mm -hmm. So I got to invent a whole bunch of new companies yes. and, and advertising and, uh, and rivalries between them and uh, different industries and how they, how they build themselves up. Um, so the process to that must be amazing. It is a lot of fun <laughs> just to dream up new names for random things. New names, and I think they'll invent this, and I think this yeah. would be what it does, and very clever. Let's yeah. talk about one or two of the new gizmos you have in here. Okay. Um, the sustenance... Generator. Generator. Yes. Tell us what that is. Well, it's, um, in my mind, I have it perfect, even though a lot of times uh, when I make these little inventions, of course I don't know how they work. They're future inventions. Yeah. If I could, If I could make them, I wouldn't be writing. I'd be... A billionaire Inventor. making these inventions, sure. but uh, but the sustenance generator takes any kind of matter and breaks it down into its most basic components, and then reforms it into a nutrient-rich component. So so it's you know, food puts it down right. It's it's not necessarily appetizing. It doesn't but sound it'll get very you through. appetizing. Yeah, but it'll get you through. It's a it's kind of a brown jelly. It's not <laughs> brown gelatin. <laughs> so when you get done, it kind of looks like I turned this cup upside down on the table, and uh, except it's loose. except even less appetizing than that styrofoam. <laughs> so if that's possible. Oh, that is too funny. Um, give me another item that you've got. What what was the um, the the item in which he came out of? Oh, um, the IPS. The IPS, which is the uh, individual preservation shelter. An individual preservation shelter. So I don't go into a whole lot of detail on the first book mm -hmm. on it very purposefully because it has a lot to do with the mystery and how everything works because he doesn't know. And because he doesn't know, you don't either. We don't know. Right. Um, but basically, and you can tell in, in that book exactly how it works out, it preserves him in an individual state mm -hmm. for a specified amount of time. Okay. All right. That was very, very interesting. Yeah. Now, this is your first book. Yes. And you've got a series. Yes. And what is the series called? Uh, the series is called The Continuation of Days. Okay. Um, the reason for the title of that first book is that uh, the end is what everyone calls those fateful days in 2034 of when the world really kind of stopped turning for everybody. Okay. Um, but I don't want to have to go back to talking about the actual act of the end. Okay. So because that book carries so much detail of that, that's why it's called that. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Um, then the second book, is it written? Yes. Yeah. The second book is written, and it's going through the final round of editing right now. So, uh, and it's called? It's called Predefiance. 
pre-defiance. Yes, it is the... It takes place, um, does it continue? It is the perfect continuation of this. Okay. Um, the first, or the very last few pages of this book basically skew over five hours. Um, it brushes over it almost completely, and it's the only time it really happens that it totally brushes over an amount of time that something could have happened. Okay. Uh, and so for the first 10 pages of book two, it tells you what happened during those five hours, and it kind of eases you back into the storyline. Oh, okay. That's a good way to yeah. continue the book. Yes. Yeah, I thought it was decent. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to read that one. Yeah. Is the third one written yet? Uh, third one's in production right now. So Is it? basically, I'm, that just means I'm <clears throat> writing it right now. Um, one of the main complaints that I got from people when uh, from reading the first book was that I didn't go into detail about lots of different things. Uh, there were a ton of things that I just, I didn't talk about because Grayson walks by them. It's something that he hears about and then you never hear another thing about or characters that get introduced that you get no depth on. Um, and I explained to my friend that uh, had read the first book that had the complaint that there was, there was no way I could go into all those things because of how the the perspective is and because it's his and I don't write stories about other people in the book I write stories about how he is and he said this has nothing to do with that I'm actually interested oh so are these new story so, ideas yeah. coming from so the, the third the third book is um, will be a compilation of short stories uh, all pertaining to little things that I don't go into any detail on in those books Really? Um, yeah. So, so is that going to make sense uh, to anyone that's read the first two books? Yeah, absolutely. It'll be a lot of fun to read, actually, because it'll be snippets. You'll be able to run through a nine-page story and get insight onto characters that otherwise didn't have any places, things. It's you know what this reminds me of? I'm a Trekkie. Are you a Trekkie? Uh, okay, so... Oh, uh, okay, that's a yes. <laughs> no, okay. no, okay. It's a no. Oh, it's a no. It's a no. Well, hold on, hold on. It's a no, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> I get it all. I understand it all. I know most of the characters and most of the storyline, but I wouldn't call myself a Trekkie because I don't, like, I haven't watched it all. I don't oh, know everything. Oh, that's too bad. But I get all the jokes. <laughs> Well, that's good. That's okay. a plus. Yeah. That's a plus. <laughs> but it reminds me, what you're saying there re reminds me of how Star Trek developed. Yeah. Because it started out with the original series, and then it branched off to the next generation. And then they had Voyager and, you know, Deep Space Nine, da-da-da-da. Right. Um, because, and, the, and in those other um, shows, they would touch back on something that happened in the original series. Yep. And they would go into further depth, and then we would understand something more, what have you. So that's going to be interesting. Yep. I actually, um, uh, through the part that you're in right now, I actually have uh, written a story about uh, Clay City. Oh, have and, you? Yeah. So, uh, and if just, you pick up the yeah. end, you can understand what we're saying. <laughs> it's just a little, uh, you know, a little snippet back that just to revisit the characters and to, you know, see how things happened in the meantime. Uh, well, that's good because that's as a reader, I'm wondering what's it like in Clay City. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting. That's very cool. So you've got the series that you want to do. Are you self-publishing the book? Yes. You are. Um, yeah, I. I received a couple author, uh, offers from publishers that wanted to split it, mm -hmm. and uh, one of my friends actually gave me the words of wisdom that I needed to, to say no. He said, you know, I'm standing in a room right now with all kinds of books, and uh, they're all different lengths. Yeah. He said, it, it amazes me that there's good. a standard for how long a book can be. Yeah, oh, that's a good point. So I, I didn't necessarily agree with that. You know, I mean, there's a lot of really great books out there that are, that are 500, 600 pages. There's a lot of great yep. books out there that are 100. Mm -hmm. but great books, classics. Yep. So I don't necessarily think that there should be some kind of a, a limit. And they said that the, the normal amount is 60,000 words and that the top that they would possibly print is 90,000. They wouldn't go a word above. Boy, that they're leaving money on the tables talking like that. I, I, would, I mean, hello. I would think so. It doesn't seem like it's. It doesn't seem That's like when you a set a number model. like that, it's no. No. So this is three hundred and forty-six pages long. Yeah. And this is just the first book. Right. How about the second book? 
Is it uh, more? The second book's a little shorter, actually. Is it shorter? Which, yeah, I very purposefully made it a little bit shorter. Um, I didn't. I only write until I need to to be done with the book. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna. I don't push things. It's no reason to do it. And like I said, it's pushing itself. The book writes itself. So when it's done, it's done, and I yeah. can go on to something else. Yeah. But um, but yeah, this is uh, this is a uh, hundred and forty thousand, and the next one's a hundred and twenty. So, Words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it cuts it off. Well, I'm glad that it's it's substantial. The yeah, story is oh, going to yes. be there. I mean, I'm going to be in this book for a little while at the yeah. rate I can read. <laughs> let me tell you. Um, where where do you think of these things, though? I, I'm still curious, maybe because I don't think you answered the question for me. Oh. Where do you get these ideas? I, I, do they just come to you? They just come to me. I can't. Yeah. I mean, do pe do experiences or relatives like, oh boy, that's such a crazy relative. I got to put a character in a book. I I, I know that it, it's uh, if it seems that well written, uh, maybe good, good for, for me. You. Um, but <laughs> it, as far as I know, it's it's an imagination thing. Uh, I I quite literally don't know where any of it comes from. Hmm. Uh, it all pops in. I decide in that moment that that's what I need mm -hmm. and that's what I get. That's uh, interesting. Yeah, uh, none of the names, uh, I think I have, through two books I have four names I think total that I wanted, that I chose for a specific reason to get a, to get a specific reaction from. All the others I actually have, I have three websites that I go to. Uh, one has boys names, one has girls names, and one has the 100,000 most common surnames in the United States. No kidding. And I throw a dart at them, and that's how I do it. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> oh, my, I did not know those websites existed. Yeah, that's very yeah. neat. Well, I mean, well, people have to find a name for their kids somehow, well, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That's not the method <laughs> I used, but okay. <laughs> I'm talking with a local author. His name is Tyler Wood. He has... Uh, the book, The End, I really recommend that you get it. Um, it is available on Amazon. Yes. And um, you can get the Kindle version or you can purchase the book. How are you funding this project? Well, because uh, you're self publishing. Believe it or not, independent publishing is quote unquote free. Yes. Now, quote unquote free means that they I take was... quite a cut, and, uh, and if you want to price it yourself, you're adding quite a bit of money to. Uh, to what the cost of the book is, mm -hmm. um, I've I've done it well. Let me put it that way. I'm not necessarily making a large profit off of uh, the writing, but it's enough. Mm -hmm. And uh, and right now, you know, I'm I want people to read it. Uh, yeah. There's there's some kind of satisfaction as a writer when when someone says, "Hey, I read your book." Mm -hmm. And at that point, it almost doesn't matter if they like it or not. <laughs> I know that that sounds terrible. But, um, you just want them to read but it. But if they read all the way through it, well, they must have had to like it some. Well, I've, it kept I've had them... lots of people read it so far, and they've all liked it. So, um, have you had anybody fun. say, "I read the whole thing and it sucks"? No, really, that's no. good. That's a good thing. No, it is. It's very good. Um, uh, I have eight reviews up right now on Amazon. All people that liked it. Okay. Um, and uh, it's funny because one of my friends gave me uh, the best review. He reads post-apocalyptic fiction. Does he? Uh, dystopian future stuff all the time and okay. loves it. And he told me that he would be as honest as he could. Okay. And he said that the first little bit was a little bit difficult to get through. He said it didn't quite read the way he wanted it to. Mm -hmm. And then he said it's like there's a line and all of a sudden everything is awesome. <laughs> he said, and I don't know where it is, he said, but it's like there's a point where everything else flows perfectly. He said, I can't wait for the second book. That's great. And it's great. It's a, it's a really good feeling to have. And I don't, uh, I'm as humble as it gets. So uh, I, <laughs> yes, I, I can't thank you. But, uh, which by the way is kind of a contradiction, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm the best at being humble. Exactly. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> so am I, don't feel bad. We're, we're two of the same. Well, if somebody had said, you know, this just ain't my cup of tea. I don't mm -hmm. understand it. It makes no sense to me. Yeah. I mean, come on. Then right? it's not. Who, who's going to survive a Holocaust? Yeah. 
what would you do? Would it make you alter what, your next book? No. Or um, it would just be feedback that you received. And thank you very much. And on you Not go. everybody likes every book. I don't. True. I have not read uh, the Twilight series. It does not interest me. Neither have I. Okay. So it doesn't interest okay. me. But that's okay. <laughs> Some people don't like certain books. I yeah. will say um, that my uh, my Nana read this book. Did she? What and was her reaction? I did. It's really funny. She is. Uh, she is a very straightforward lady. Okay. And uh, she told me that she loved it. Oh, really? And I didn't think in a million years that she would like this book. It is not up her alley. She does not read anything like this. But if she did not like it, she would have told me because she has very little filter. <laughs> As most um, grandmothers. Yeah, she yeah, absolutely. And that's right. that, that's a good thing to have is no filter when you're giving somebody feedback that's on something true. like this. But that's true. But she loved something it. something that I need and she loved it. So it's Nana approved. Yeah. Look at that. And I, it sounds it sounds trite to say that there's there's a family member that, that is encouraging me because you would think that or you would hope that they all would. But I appreciate it. Yeah. And yeah. I trust it. There aren't, I don't, I can't imagine many grandmothers. Now, look, I'm a grandmother, okay? We're, we're fascinating people. Um, but not a lot of us would choose to read this type of a story. Right. I would never have picked it up unless I hadn't met you and you gave me the book. Yeah. And I said, oh, gee, this sounds pretty cool. Because I, I have to tell you, this paragraph on the back is what captured me. This is it right here. So if you wrote this. I did. Good stuff. Yeah. It wasn't boring. It gave me enough to chew on and want more. Yeah. Um, but if if Nana likes it, that's pretty darn yeah. good. <laughs> I'm really pleased to hear that. So where do you want to go with the series? Because, well, I don't do a lot of interviewing of authors, but. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Because you've got a series, you're not just a single book, I'm wondering if this would make a good movie. Well, and that's, uh, that's one of the things when I, uh, when I met you uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. and uh, my colleague that was on with me said, it reads like a movie. It Elliot does. story, yeah, by the way. He, yes. uh, Elliot. Um, it does read like a movie. It does. It I reads, can easily see it being yes, a movie, just can, from what I've read. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, that's, I would love that. That would be cool. There would be nothing more awesome than having it be a movie. It would be the absolute title best thing that had ever happened to anything that ever happened to me. I would be so happy. <laughs> okay, so that's what we're looking for, guys. Okay, that's good, but you gotta, you gotta give me a part in the movie. Okay? Absolutely. I'll be an extra, but I gotta be up front. Perfectly okay? fine. That's perfectly fine. I can definitely have that happen. <laughs> I absolutely love that. But, uh, but where where I actually want to go uh, from here with the series is that I have a third book right now that's written. Uh, it's called Between Days. That is going to be about all the little in between stories for the first two books. Oh. And after that, I get to continue the main storyline. So, you'll, so there'll, there'll be, be more. at least a fourth book. So we're talking like a Harry Potter thing. Oh well, yeah, you know, ah. I'm, uh, not not on purpose, but it's but it, it, it writes, writes itself. itself. Look at that. We did not rehearse that. Honest so God. no, it works perfectly. <laughs> but if uh, if if it finishes on the fourth book, then it's done. Mm -hmm. If I have to write a fifth book to finish it, then there will be a sixth book that has more short stories pertaining to the fourth and fifth book. There you go. So it kind of just depends on how it all falls. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> well, when is the uh, second book available? The second book should be available um, at the end of the month. I am, uh, I'm, I guess this is a good time for this right now. Let's I'm running do it. A, I'm running a Kickstarter campaign right now. And what is Kickstarter? Uh, Kickstarter is a crowdfunding website. Crowdfunding. And okay. what uh, I'm using it for advertising and sales. Mm -hmm. uh, it's working out really well.